Dear all, welcome again to InfoTube Online Nephrology Lectures. In this lecture, I will talk about Kedigo 2021 Clinical Practice Guidelines for the Management of Antineutrophil Cytoplasmic Antibody Associated Vasculitis. First of all, what about diagnosis of ANCA Associated Vasculitis? Actually, or commonly, patients with ANCA Associated Vasculitis are presented with rapid decline in kidney function and the rapidly progressive pulmonary disease. So this approach is for patients presents for patient presents with rapid decline in the kidney function, you have to do urine analysis. If the urine analysis not positive for uh, uh, protein or blood, so you have to evaluate for non-glomerular cause for this acute kidney injury. If yes, there is protein and blood, check the urine sediment. If it is positive for glomerular hematuria, which is meant by RBC's casts or uh, pyuria without infection. Pyuria without infection is indicating uh, the presence of inflammation and reaction uh, in the kidney, which is consistent also with a glomerular uh, etiology. If no, so again, re-evaluate for non-glomerular etiology of acute kidney injury. If yes, so you are uh, in front of a case of rapidly progressive glomerular nephritis, you have to evaluate for extra renal signs and symptoms. Make your autoimmune serology, ANCA, ANA, anti glomerulonephritis membrane antibodies, and complement. You have to exclude infection because you will start immunosuppressives, and also because infection may present with a shape like vasculitis. And finally, obtain kidney biopsy is if feasible. This is the list of uh, extra uh, of the extra renal uh, symptoms in patients with different uh, diseases present presenting with ANCA vasculitis. Uh, which are microscopic polyangitis, granulomatosis with polyangitis, and uh, xenophilic granulomatosis with polyangitis. The, uh, the frequencies of uh, all the organ system affection differs in percentage between the three types of ancestral vasculitis, uh, but actually the treatment of them at the end is uh, actually the same. And now, the biopsy can be classified according to the presence of sclerosis or crescents. If more than 50% or equal to 50% globally sclerotic glomeruli, yes, so this is sclerotic class and uh, its response to immunosuppressive may be uh, weak. If no, more than or equal 50% are normal glomeruli, yes, so it is called the focal class ANCA vasculitis. If no, more than or equal 50 serial crescents, yes, so it is crescent class. If no of these criteria, so it is called mixed class. So what about treatment? I will start by treatment initiation. After the diagnosis of ANCA associated vasculitis and you did your assessment, you have to uh, uh, start induction of remission. The most important or the first two lines are saclosamide plus glucocorticoid or rituximab plus glucocorticoid. Also, if uh, uh, no organ threatening involvement, there is evidence that you can consider microphenylating fatigue. If there is vital organ, life threatening disease, and serum creatinine more than 5.7, so you can consider plasma pharesis. Then you will make disease control on drug remission, then start the maintenance. Let's, let us talk about let us talk about saclofosamide plus group corticoid and rituximab plus group corticoid. When to prefer rituximab and when to prefer saclofosamide? To prefer rituximab is in the following cases, children and adolescents, premenopausal women and men, and this is uh, for the infertility, for the fertility of the patient to keep the fertility. Consider rituximab in uh, frail older adults. If you want to have glucocorticoid sparing uh, course in the relapsing disease and in the PR3 ANCA associated disease. When to consider cyclophosamide if rituximab is difficult to access. Also, in severe uh, glomerular nephrites, serum creatinine more than four, and also you can use a combination of two intravenous pulses of cyclophosamide with rituximab can be considered as, uh, the, and we will mention that uh, lately. 
And this is the usual comparison by uh, intravenous cyclophosphamide and oral cyclophosphamide that we all know. An important practice point, if you started uh, initiation therapy for the patient and uh, the patient is on dialysis, if no response of the patient for treatment after three months and the patient remain on dialysis, stop the immunosuppressors except if the patient has extra renal manifestations. So the patient will at this point receive immunosuppressive therapy for it for his extra renal manifestations only. But if no response guarding the kidney outcome after three months, so stop these medications. The important point that was mentioned in KD guidelines is the tapering of glucocorticoids and the using of lower doses of glucose. They mentioned that lower dose of glucose, sorry, of um, glucocorticoids, lower dose of glucocorticoids are equally effective to high dose of glucocorticoids with fewer short and long term toxicities. And this table showing the suggested protocol for the tapering of glucocorticoids on time for different body weights. This is how, we'll do, how you will use different uh, doses of different uh, immunosuppressive therapies for induction, whether the oral cyclophosphamide, intravenous cyclophosphamide, rituximab, or if you decided to use rituximab and intravenous cyclophosphamide, and finally for the MMF. Regarding the plasma pharesis, you have considered it, you have to consider it when serum creatinine is more than 5.7 or the patient is requiring uh, dialysis, or the patient has rapidly increasing creatinine, and also in cases with diffuse alveolar hemorrhage with hypoxemia. In patients with ankylvasculitis and severe disease, you have to make seven treatments of plasma exchange over a maximum of 14 days, so seven treatments, every, uh, one, tre one treatment every other day, and you have to make 60 mL per kilogram volume replacement, and use albumin substitution. If vasculitis is associated with diffuse pulmonary hemorrhage, you have to make daily treatments until bleeding stops, and you have to replace albumin with fresh, freeze, uh, fresh frozen plasma. If vasculitis is associated with anti glomerulonephritis membrane antibodies, you have to make plasma exchange daily for 14 days or until anti GBM antibodies are undetectable. That was for the initiation of treatment. What about the maintenance of treatment? The maintenance is mainly by switching to other cyprine or to continue rituximab. The work group of Kidigo preferred rituximab for maintenance, but what are the criteria that will make us prefer rituximab and what are the criteria that will make us prefer other cyprine? Rituximab preferred in relapsing disease, the same uh, criteria for uh, preference as we mentioned in the in, uh, initiation of therapy. Relapsing disease, PR3 ANCA disease, frail older adults for group corticoid sparing, and here if there is other cyprin allergy. Other cyprin is preferred when there is low baseline IgG, less than 300 mg per deciliter, if the patient has hepatitis B surface antigen positive, and if there is limited availability of rituximab. <laughs> What are the doses? They mentioned here also that you can use MMF, but uh, the evidence is more for rituximab and other cyprin. Regarding other cyprin, you will use it in 1.522 mg per kilogram per day at complete remission until one year after diagnosis, then decrease by 25 mg every three months. Regarding the rituximab, 500 mg times two at complete remission, and then 500 mg at month is 6, 12, 18 thereafter. Or 1 gram infusion after induction of remission, and at month is 4, 8, 12, and 16 after the first infusion. Some important practice points about the duration of maintenance therapy. The optimal duration for other cyprine plus low dose group corticoid is not well known, but should be between 18 months and four years after induction of remission, according to the available evidence. Regarding rituximab, optimal duration also is not known, but studies 
to date have evaluated a duration of at least 18 months after remission. There is no role for the routine use of glucocorticoid or other immunosuppressives with rituximab. Yeah, and for sure, when uh, you are trying to withdrawing the uh, drug, the risk of relapse is high. So you have to teach your patient and inform your patient uh, to uh, the need for promote attention for recurrence of symptoms to restart uh, induction therapy early before the disease progress. In some patients, as it is mentioned in the Kidigo guidelines, we, you can consider methotrexate for maintenance therapy in patients after induction with methotrexate or for those who are intolerant of other cyprin and MMF. But sure, not for GFR less than 6. What about the treatment of relapsing and refractory cases? An important point regarding the relapse and the, the uh, decision uh, in treatment, the persistence of ANCA positivity or an increase in ANCA level or a change in ANCA from negative to positive are only modestly predictive of future disease relapse. This is very important. We shouldn't guide, we shouldn't use them to guide treatment decisions. Treatment decisions are on clinical base. There are many factors that increase the relapse of uh, the risk, the relapse risk of ANCA associated vasculitis, as if the patient diagnosed of granulomatose with polyangiitis, PR3 ANCA, lower serum creatinine, more extensive disease, if there is ear, nose, and throat disease, if there is a previous history of relapse, if the patient is ANCA positive at the end of induction or the patient has a rise in ANCA, if the patient exposed to lower cyclophosphamide uh, dose, if there is early immunosuppressive withdrawal and if there is glucocorticoid withdrawal. How to treat relapsing disease? By reinduction. But here, for relapsing disease, rituximab is preferred than cyclophosphamide. Regarding refractory disease, if the disease is refractory, you have to increase the dose of glucocorticoid and you can use rituximab if you were using cyclophosphamide for induction and vice versa, and we consider also plasma exchange. Regarding transplantation decision in this patient, don't delay transplantation except in the following situ situation. Delay transplantation until patients are complete clinical remission, clinical remission, not serological, clinical remission for uh, six months or more. Persistence of ANCA shouldn't delay transplantation, but the most important is the clinical remission. Thank you for watching my lecture. See you in another lectures on the fruit tube. Bye bye.